Hi there, in this video we're going to be continuing to talk about how we differentiate with respect to a vector. And remember last time that we differentiated a sort of scalar quantity which was actually x primed times a, where x primed was some 1 by p vector and a was a p by 1 vector, so we just got out a scalar quantity in the end. In this video we're similarly going to be talking about how we differentiate a scalar quantity but in this particular video, we're going to be talking about how we differentiate something which is in quadratic form or in the sort of matrix notation of quadratic form. OK, so let's define the sort of things we're talking about. X, I'm going to say here, is a 2 by 1 vector where its first entry is x1 and its second entry is x2. Yeah, so this is a 2 by 1 row vector or column vector rather. And then we're going to define a symmetric matrix A, which has a first component A11 and has diagonal components A12, which are both the same because it's symmetric, and it's got a final component A22. If we then take these two things and we multiply them together in a certain form, we can get something which we refer to in matrix notation as the quadratic form. So if we take x transpose and then multiply it by a, our symmetric matrix, and then multiply it by x. This is what we refer to as the quadratic form of matrix A. Why is it referred to as the quadratic form? Well, this is quite evident if we write it out in full. This is just x1, x2 times our matrix A, A11, A12, A12, A22 times our original vector x. Which, if we were then to sort of continue writing this out in full, what sort of size would this thing have? Well, if we were sort of thinking about each thing in turn, the thing in the middle is 2 by 2, this is 1 by 2, and this is 2 by 1. So it looks quite complicated, but we can simplify it by considering these things in pairs. So these two things to the right hand side here, I've got a 2 by 2 matrix multiplying by a 2 by 1 vector, then we know from the rules of matrix multiplication that the two inner indices cancel. So in fact this is going to yield a 2 by 1 product at the end. And then when I multiply that in turn by a 1 by 2, in this case row vector, then the twos are going to cancel and I'm just going to be left overall with a 1 by 1 result. So actually Q is itself a scalar. If we multiply out these latter two sort of products here, leaving the first row vector, we can sort of write this as it's going to be A11 times X1 plus A12 times X2 as going to be the top component. So to get that I've just taken this row here and multiplied it by this column vector here. And then the second entry in our 2 by 1 vector is going to be the bottom row. So it's going to be a12 x1 plus, and um, we're going to have a22 x2, which in turn, when I multiply this out, we're going to have a11 x1 squared plus 2a12 times x1 x2 plus a22 times x2 squared. If you don't know quite how I've got to this step, I encourage you to sort of do this yourself and um, just to see that I'm not just making it up as I go along. Okay, so it's quite evident when we write it out in full that this is in fact a, or Q is in fact a scalar quantity. And we, when we've written it out in full, it's evident why we've called it a quadratic form because x1, we've got x1 squared, we've got x2 squared, and we've got some sort of quadratic product as well in the middle here. Okay, so we've sort of defined this new quantity Q. We then need to think about what it actually means to find the differential of, or the derivative of Q with respect to our vector X. First of all, what dimension should this have? We know from what we talked about in the last video that when we differentiate with respect to a particular vector, then that is itself a vector of the same dimension as the thing we're differentiating with respect to. So this is actually going to have the same dimensions as our x up here, so it's actually going to be a 2 by 1 vector itself. 
with the two components being, well, the top component is going to be dq over dx1, and the second component is going to be dq over dx2. I'm not sure if you can quite see that, but yeah, so the second component is going to be dq over dx2. Then we can quite easily find these two particular quantities just by taking our sort of explicit form, which we derived over here, and differentiating that with respect to x1 and x2. So the top component here is going to be, we're going to have 2a11x1 plus we're going to have 2a12x2. And that's just going to be it because when I differentiate something with just x2 squared with respect to x1, then that just goes to zero because it's treating x2 as a constant. And then the bottom line is going to be exactly analogous, except we're going to have 2a12 um, x1 plus 2a22 x2. But in fact, this is, we could actually write this in a much simpler form. It's just equal to 2 times the matrix A times our original vector x. So you've actually got 2ax. And now when we see it in this form, it becomes quite, it's another sort of supported evidence for why we call this a quadratic form because Remember when you sort of had we were first taught calculus and you had y equals x squared? When you differentiate y with respect to x here, you got a 2 out the front, so you got 2x. And essentially that's what we've got here. We've, we've got out a 2 after we've differentiated it times our sort of original thing, right? Ax. So that's a sort of rule for differentiating a quadratic form with respect to the row, oh, sorry, the column vector x. If we were differentiating q with respect to a column vector, then we have to modify our results slightly. And we're just going to talk about that briefly in the next lecture. I'll see you then.